Hello and welcome to Tip of the Week by CAD Tech Seminars, uh, also known as FreeRevitTraining.com. You can also find us on the web at AutoCADTraining.com also. Uh, this tip will be dealing with working with column grids and levels in Revit. Uh, Revit that I'll be using is Revit Architecture 2010. It works in 2011 and 2009 and all versions. So uh, let's take a look. One of the problems that people run into is dealing with grids and levels uh, when they start to work with them a little bit more um, in depth. For instance, let's take a look at uh, column number four here. Now we have column number four, and if I look at column number four in my north elevation, and then I go to my south elevation, you'll notice that they, they're consistent. Now some people will come and take, let's say, column four, and they drag it up. Now you'll notice how all the columns are working in unison. To break them apart, this is a very simple aspect, but this will be the first part to it, will unlock it. When you unlock it, now the single grid floats freely. Now you'll notice when I pull the grid up, it's looking all nice. And you're thinking, oh, maybe I want to bring it up high above the building. And it's looking pretty. That looks nice and everything. But here's where the problem comes in. If I go to level 1, you'll notice that the grid line number 4 is gone. Notice 3 is there, but 4 is gone. So at this point, I start to panic. Where did it go? Where did it go? Let's go back to our south elevation. In the south elevation, I'm going to grab, grab it. And I'm going to drag it back down uh, to this location again. Grab on the circle. All right, and drag it down, and here we go. Now let's go back to look at level one. You'll notice that we can see it. The reason being is that the planes cross each other. I've got the grid plane crossing the level plane. So where you hit the cut line, all that kind of comes into play. So how do I take this column grid, either three or four, and bring it up high where visually it doesn't cut it in my elevation, but it actually does cut it in real life. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that grid and we're going to drop it down and we're going to see where it says bubble gap. Now if I flip it to bubble gap you'll notice that at this point it's actually uh, changed and you can see there's a gap in there. Now you notice the gap is between level 2 and level roof here. So even though I don't see it visually when I roll over it you'll see it's continuous. So if I go to level 2 I can actually see it. So that's a good way to go about it. So let's go back to uh, our elevations. And that works out nice. Now to make it look good we may come up here and tweak it a little bit. I'll grab that dot, drag it up. I'll drag this dot all the way down like so. So you'll notice that it's real clean. Now when I roll over it notice that the actual line or the grid line is actually really there. It's going through and intersecting the other planes. So when we go back to our level 2 or level 1 we actually see it. Now you'll notice that it has that same type here. So we can either bring them together or we can uh, separate them out how we wanted to make them happen. So just a variation on the grid line there and makes it work pretty well. Now I'll go back to my south elevation or north. This one works just fine. Now when I roll over these there's another trick we can do. You'll notice down at the bottom it says 3D and I can click on it and it'll go to 2D. Now when it's in 2D mode if I drag it up. Now I want you to notice I'm just going to drag it up in this view to this location. So I've dragged it up. Now let's go back to, uh, let's say, our south elevation. You'll notice that 4 has come all the way through. So notice 4, we shortened it per view. This is another way to go about it. Now let's verify that it's showing up on level 1. So we go to level 1, notice the 4 is here. Okay. And if we go to south elevation, actually I think it was the north one that we adjusted, notice how it's actually going up here. Now when you click on here, you'll notice it's in 2D. You'll notice there's a little extension line that goes down here and shows this little dot. So again, the grid line is, is actually going through this location. It's just that when we flip this over to 2D, it says in this view, in this view only, adjust the grid line. So we can do the same thing as before. Notice now we move that grid line here. Now if we click it, you'll notice that the dot's down here. Okay, so it's, it's still going through. But visually in this view, just in the north view, it is shortened. Let's go to south view. You notice the south view, it's full again. And if we go to level 2, it's full. And if you go to level 1, it's full. So there's uh, two options that we can use to adjust that grid line. To recap, we can grab the object and change it to bubble gap. That'll give us a gap, and we can adjust the gap as needed. The actual grid line is truly going through. The second one is we actually, let's go back to our elevation. We select the grid line. And we switch it over to, first of all, we unlock it from the other. 
and then we switch it to 2D. By switching it to 2D, this gives us the ability to adjust each grid line independently per view. So there's the two ways to um, adjust grid lines. We'll go back and verify. North, you'll notice that, again, we've adjusted them as, ne as needed per view. These uh, games we just played, or these features, are also available um, in levels. Now, in this scenario, you'll see we have a level 2. Now, if I go to my south elevation, you'll see, again, I have level 2. And we're just looking at north and south right now, just to make it easy. So uh, going to north elevation, south elevation, and you'll notice that they're the same. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select this one. Now, you'll notice here we currently do not have different types of uh, level references. You may be able to download some on the Internet, but let's just look at the, the easier of the two. We come over here and we switch this to 2D. Now, we click on it, notice it goes to 2D. When it's in 2D, we can drag it independently. All right. Now, I'm going to make it a little shorter in this view. Notice that one's shorter, but notice that the hollow blue dot or the circle is still there. So the level actually extends out to that location. It's just in this view, we've shortened it. So let's verify. Let's go to our north elevation, and you'll notice that in the north elevation, it looks fine. Go back to south elevation, and you'll see it's shorter. So we have the ability here to tweak them. Now again, the trick is you could unlock it first and then change it to 2D, and that will work just fine. Or if you wanted to, you can just select it, switch it to 2D, it lets go of the others, and we can move it. So per view, if we wanted to drag these back, like so, we could. So in that view, drag it back. Okay, you'll see that little lineup feature there. And we'll grab this one here. So you'll notice how nice those uh, those work out. At this point, uh, we have these set back, and then we'll go back to north, and you'll see they go through the building. So there's a couple of tricks of working with your grid lines and your level lines just to get things looking good in your elevations and uh, plans, etc. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's a tip from, let's say, freerevittraining.com. If you have any questions, feel free to check us out on our web. Thank you.